have found that being miserable don't change anything, but just you're just miserable. Amen. And so I might as well smile and be happy. Amen. Uh, at least to the best of my ability to be happy. Amen. Until someone unhappies me. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I'm going to get in the word of the Lord here in just a moment. Amen. I'm just so thankful. Amen. It's good to see Brother Daryl Harold here today. Amen. And I'm so happy that he's here. Brandon, it's good to see you again. Amen. Thank you for being here also. Bill, thank you for cleaning out that bus shed. Y'all don't know this. Amen. Bill came, he called me and said, Amen, I want to clean out the bus. Can I do that? I said, You absolutely can. Amen. I wasn't going to argue with him and say, No, you can't do it, Bill. I'm not going to have it. I'd rather be disgusting and miserable for them kids when they get on there. No, sir. Amen. I appreciate him coming down here Saturday and cleaning that bus out. Amen. And, uh, uh, and I know others that have done things, amen, I'm not, um, I appreciate Dave coming out here, getting these fans out here early in the morning for me, amen, uh, making sure we try to stay somewhat cool in here. By the way, let me offer my last apology on this. I'm hoping this is the last one I have to give. It is now October the 7th. I just assumed we would not be having any more 90 degree days, but Lord, I've been wrong, amen, again. So uh, sooner or later, it will get down to 70s and 60s, I assure you, amen, and uh, those of you not know, we had one of our AC units went out here about a, about a month or so ago here, I guess, and we decided not to replace it till the springtime, figuring that we shouldn't have any more 90-degree days. Well, uh, I'm using we on that because I'm dragging you all with me on this decision. Amen. Uh, because I am regretting that decision as we speak, and I want to apologize personally to everybody here. Even if you're uncomfortable today, I am so sorry. Amen. I will try not to be long-winded. Nobody said Amen. Okay, so I'll tell you exactly what I told that ham sandwich. I will not hold you long. Amen. So, amen. I still got it, Brother Chris. Amen. I don't know where they go sometimes, but if you got your Bibles with you, please turn me to the book of Judges, chapter 15, beginning at verse 7. <clears throat> I'm going to be a little lengthy on my reading today. Once again, I was last week, too. Normally, I don't, I'm not using that lengthy. But sometimes with these Old Testament stories, it, you got to read a little bit on these because there's so many things that get thrown into the mix. Amen. And, uh, and so I, I'm just ask you to bear with me for a f- just a few moments this morning. Amen. This chapter 15, yes it is, verse. And Samson said unto them, Though you have done this, talking about the death, amen, of his father-in-law and his wife, He said, yet I will be avenged of you, talking about the Philistines, and after that I will cease. And he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter, and he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock Etam. Now, if you don't know what Etam is, I'll explain it to you shortly, amen. Uh, But it's a very high cliff, amen, where they would stay at, amen. And it was an overlook, amen, of a valley below. He said, and the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah, and spread themselves in Lehi. Now, I want you to stop there. And, you know, there, you, when you read certain things in Scripture, sometimes you just read through it, but you need to stop and see what it's saying. Because any time the Philistines are pitched themselves in Judah, Judah means praise, folks. Sometimes the Philistines want to stop and interrupt your praise service. Come on. They want, they want to try to move in to some places in your life to keep you from worshiping God. Amen. Please Stand that, amen. Don't let anything take away your praise. Amen. Don't let any, it might temporarily disable you sometimes, but don't let it take it away. Come on, I got to be honest. I, 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 there have been days I've come in not ready to praise like I should. Just being honest here, amen. Praise God. Is everybody gone to the restroom that's going to go? Amen. I'm just going to be honest here. Because I want everybody to go that needs to go. Let's go now. I mean, I, I've seen a lot of running in and out here today, and I, I, I kind of need someone to focus a little bit here, folks. That's why we give you some time. Amen. Uh, but I, I want you all to understand something. I, I need someone to focus on some things from God, because God's got something. Amen. He's got something for you. You need to hear this. It's important for you to hear this today. Amen. Said, and Samson said unto them, Though you have done this, yet will I be avenged of you, and after that I will cease. And he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter. He went down and dwelt in the top of the rock, Etam. Then the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi. They put a camp up in Judah to try to take away your praise. And then they started spreading themselves out 
in a place called Lehi. And I'll, I'll get into Lehi in a minute. Amen. Verse uh, 10 said, And the men of Judah said, Why are you come up against us? And, and they answered, To bind Samson are we come up to do to him as he has done to us. And then 3,000 men of Judah went to the top of the rock of Ram and said to Samson, Don't you know that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, As they have done it to me, so I've done unto them. They did it to me, I'm doing it back to them. Y'all know how the best way to get off. <laughs> you know, I'd be careful. I'll just take away all my preaching while I'm just talking to you here. So let me just shut up for a minute. Amen. I, and they said unto him, We're come to bind thee, that we may deliver you into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that you will not fall upon me yourselves. Don't kill me yourself. At least let them do it. Bad enough, you're going to line me up and give me to them, even though they probably couldn't have stopped him if he wanted to. He let himself be taken by them. Amen. He said, they spake of them, saying, No, but we will bind you fast and deliver them into their hand, but surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords and <coughs> excuse me, brought him from the rock. And verse 14 says, And when he came into Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands were loosed from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of a donkey, and put forth his hand, and took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, and with the jaw of a donkey have I slain a thousand men. <coughs> and finally, verse 17. I'm sorry, through 19. I'm sorry, I need a few more verses. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone out of the hand. And he called that place Ramath Lehi, Ramath Lehi, sorry, or the height of Lehi. And he was sore thirst and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of the servant. Now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. Here, Lord, I did a work for you. Now you're going to forget about me. Come on. Anybody ever said that? I've done bus ministry. I've done jail ministry. I've done yin, 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 yin. I'm going to take all my preaching away. I'm going to have nothing left. Amen. Sometimes it's good to go verse by verse. But God clave a hot place that was in the jaw, and there came water there out. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore, he called the name thereof in Hakore. I, I have no idea if that's how it's pronounced. That's what we're calling it right now. Which is in Lehi unto this day. Which is in Lehi unto this day. And also, one more verse of Scripture, and I'll have you seated. Book of Mark. <clears throat> Excuse me. Chapter 7, verse 13. Making the word of of none effect through your tradition, which you have delivered, and many such like things do you. Making the word effect, none effect, because of your traditions, not God's, yours. We make the word of God of none effect. Amen. I can... See, I have to be careful what road I'll go down here today. I go down about four different roads here already, and I'm just trying to, trying to, I'm trying to keep myself focused here today because, amen, there's about three things, amen, I just feel like I can just shoot off on here right now, and I'm just bearing with myself. Praise God. Let's all bow our heads. Ask God to bless us here today. Ask him to bless the word, if you would. Father, I pray today, Lord God, by your divine hand, Lord, that you'll help us in this hour. Lord, we're nothing without you. Lord, we need you. God, you chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that will believe. I didn't choose it, you did. So, Lord, I'm just asking you to use this man here today, Lord God. Help me. Lord, anoint me with fresh oil here today. Lord, take, these, take this mouth and use it, O God, to the best of your ability here today, Lord God. Help me not to interfere with whatever you need for this people today. Lord, I just pray, Lord God, that your divine hand will move across this house today and speak to every heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. I'll get me a glass of water while I do. Amen. It's the fall season. When fall comes around, I start getting scratchy throats. And, amen. I don't even know what's falling from the air, but apparently it's getting into my throat. Amen. Can't see it. I just know I wake up scratchy. 
Amen. And uh, so bear with me for a little bit here today. But the Bible makes it very clear this story of Samson is important. Oh, well, by the way, I guess I better title this thing. It's called the Old Preacher Boneyard. Amen. The Old Preacher Boneyard. Amen. And uh, Samson made it very clear what was done to him, he was going to do back to them. Amen. See, Samson ain't like us. The devil hits us. We run and hide from church. We run and hide from the... Th- See, the only way we're going to get a chance to hit back in Philistines is when we give it back to them. You know how we give it back to them? You pray more. You have to give it back to them. You witness more. Amen. You do more than you did before. Amen. That's how you get back at what the enemy has done to you when he shortchanges your life and he does things to shortchange your world. You say, okay, the only way I, do, I don't, you don't go run in a corner and hide and quit or, 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 or do anything like you just got to come back and say, here's what I got to do. Amen. What I want to do. Amen. <clears throat> now we've always dealt with the enemy. Amen. Because he's never going to not battling you. I, I don't care who you are, even if you try to hide for a while or you try to, amen, and, and we've all done it. We can sit in pews and still hide, folks. Let's be honest here. Amen. Just because you come to church don't mean you're in church. Can I say that again? Just because you come to church don't mean you're in church. Amen. Praise God. The church is just a building. These pews are just a, a place to sit. Amen. Amen. But I'm glad you're under the sound of preaching. I'm hoping you open up your ears and your heart. So, amen. If you open up your ear and your heart to God, amen, something can take place here today. Amen. But Samson said, I know how to get back at you. I'm going to, I'm going to fight your hip and thigh. Amen. I'm going to come in. And, he said, I got the spirit of God behind me. Amen. And I'm going to, I know exactly what to do with it. You know, some of us got the Holy Ghost and don't realize we got it. Can I say that again? Some of us got the Holy Ghost and don't realize we've got it. Amen. Some of us haven't set fire to anything. Amen. The Bible says that Samson, the reason they got mad at Samson, amen, is because he set their fields on fire in the first place. Amen. And so they, uh, they went, and, uh, uh, they went and, and, and said he killed his father-in-law and his wife over it. Amen. The Philistines did. Amen. How many times has the enemy attacked family members in your life? Amen. And you've done nothing. Come on. Put in a prayer request. Amen. But it didn't change what you did. Amen. Put in a prayer request to church. Drop a quarter in the, in the jukebox, so to speak, here. Amen. And, and hope it does something for us. Amen. Can I tell you something, folks? Amen. There comes a time if you really want to do something about the devil working it. They get up and do something about it. Amen. Folks, amen. Uh, uh, sometimes we just go into a, a shell game, into a shell mode. Amen. And, and we say, well, God didn't hear me or he didn't finish my request. Or, and all of a sudden we start blaming God for things the Philistines are doing. Amen. And all of a sudden, you know, I mean, because even Samson did the same thing. He started calling on, you know, here I've done this great work and you're just going to leave me hanging out to dry here. Amen. Hey, you're not even going to give me something to drink here, Lord. Here I've done this and, I, and, and you're not going to help me at all. Amen. Are you kidding me? Amen. And, and Samson, here he was. He slaughtered them hip and thigh, the Bible says. Amen. And how many times in our life, amen, have the Philistines walked into our life, wrecked our world, amen. Can I tell you? They've absolutely wrecked our world, amen. Because they couldn't attack us personally, amen. They may not have been able to get to us the way they wanted to because God has protected us. Amen. He's given us the baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen. He's encamped angels about us. He's watched over us. He's blessed us. He's kept us, amen, when we didn't feel like we could be kept at all, amen. But then he moved into your family members, amen, and he's tried to work inside of them, and he's tried to do things into their world, and we sat back and said, well, they should have just came to church like I did. Other ways, uh, amen. What you should be doing is saying, you know what? It's time I go uh, and go grab something, uh, and maybe slay some things, uh, hip and thigh. In other words, it maybe ought to be times where I just start getting to a prayer room and getting down the business with God. It ought to be time that I turn off some things that I might be watching, amen, and start spending some time in prayer, amen, or and try to get that Bible opened up and start reading it more. Or when the pastor calls for outreach, maybe I show up and be a part of outreach, amen. I, I don't know what. Whatever it is for you. But I do know one thing. If you're going to battle a Philistine, you're going to want to slaughter them hip and thigh. Amen. Amen. I know many of folks in the world can boast of what they can do in battle. I've talked to them. I've seen them in action. They can do it, man. Man, I, you know, you won't want to meet them in a dark alley anywhere. Come on. Man, I've seen a few, few in my lifetime. I thought, boy. I'm glad I ain't tangling with them. I think I'll step softly around that one. Amen. 
been a few over the years I've seen like that. Amen. But spiritually, all of a sudden these same individuals you don't know how to battle in the spirit. You know, just take it as it comes. And instead of going to God, we, we go to other Hello. We go to the things, amen, that will destroy us. We go to the cabinet and find a pill. We go to a bar room and find some alcohol. We go find a dealer and let him give us something. Ease our burden. The reality of it is, folks, you've just never learned how to fight in the spirit. Spiritual battles ain't always easy. They have to be fought. Spiritual battles don't come with excuses. And Lord knows we got them. Spiritual battles don't come with excuses. Let me say it again. And Lord knows we got them. Just because we can't do some of the stuff we used to don't mean we can't do anything. Sometimes we, we put ourselves in positions we can't do anything at all. At least so we tell ourselves. But yet we always find time for the fun stuff. Always find time for it. You know, I'm not trying to be disrespectful when I say that. Please don't think I'm sitting here pointing shotguns at people. I'm not. I'm just trying to help us here to understand what we need to do. Because, you see, Samson had brought himself in a place after he slaughtered him hip and thigh. His own people wanted him to knock it off. Knock it off! Here comes a Facebook complaint group. Got themselves together on Facebook. And they started their coalition against whoever they wanted to start their coalition against that week. Deliver him up to the Philistines. Because we got to. Don't you know that they're greater than we are? Don't you know? that they defeat us do not take your spiritual poverty and try to steal somebody else's spiritual riches because they know how to fight spirit don't let that be a, a <laughs> don't let that be a casting ground for you who refuses to God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. You see, Samson, even after this great battle, hey man, he, he already knew what was going to take place. And so he walked up to the Rock Etam, this cliff that overlooked the valley. And I'm pretty sure he camped out there. We've all been at that camp, haven't we? I call it the, the camp of I've just one more step is all I got to take. Just one more step. And I'm telling you, I feel like I'm at the edge of the cliff sometimes. Y'all ever been there? Anybody? Can I get a little news flash for you? We've all been there. Sometimes some folks act like it's only new to them or something. Like it only happens to them. They feel like they just can't take anymore sometimes. Folks, we've all had those days where we're just like, man, I've just had enough. And we use words like, I'm done. I think that's the term of the day. I'm done. I'm done with that or I'm over that or I'm, I'm just done. And so we stand at that rock, amen, and we just, we camp out there. You know, we hang out at the camp there. Because I thought it was funny that these folks knew right where to find Samson. Oh, yeah, he always goes to that rock after he has a spiritual battle. We know where he's at. Every time he fights some Philistines, he hangs out there all the time. Amen. Listen, folks, fighting, I'm going to tell you something, fighting Philistines ain't easy. It ain't easy work. And when you get done sometimes, what you need, amen, is your brother to stand with you. Amen. To pray for you, to help you. Amen. There are times, I'm telling you, amen, it's not to deliver them up, or put them on ropes on the back of the hands and lead them and guide them and direct them in the wrong spot. And so Samson comes and he willingly let them take him to them. Willingly went there. I find it interesting that this place was called Lehi that they were coming from to bring him to. They brought him to the ledge. Come on, Samson, let's walk you down. Mm. Y'all got to bear with me for a here. I'm, I'm about to preach something. It's very difficult for me to preach. 
They brought him off the ledge and delivered him to the Philistines in a place called Lehi. The place Lehi means the place of the donkeys. The place where the old bones of donkeys would lay. <clears throat> See, donkeys in Scripture represent something very important for us today. Saul was found during the wheat harvest looking for his father's donkeys. Of course, the wheat harvest represents Pentecost. You see, any time you see donkeys represented in Scripture, it usually points to Pentecost or the experience of Pentecost. Amen? How do I know that? Well, I know that for several reasons. I'm not going to give you all the laundry list reasons. I could, I'd have to do a complete Bible study on donkeys for you to explain it to you all. But when you see Balaam also had a donkey, and the donkey spoke a language that was foreign to it. Amen. It lets you know of a Pentecostal experience. It comes, as a matter of fact, the donkey was the only animal, the only animal of all Scripture that could be redeemed. Amen. That's right. With a temple tax, it was redeemed. Such was the life of a donkey. You see, Pentecost, amen, is what it was really talking about. Samson was all about the Pentecostal experience. He was all about the battle of the flesh versus the spirit. Samson would have great victories, amen, in the spirit, amen, and then he battled the flesh the very next day. Always oh, struggling, amen, Samson was with things that he faced, amen. Areas in his life that he had taken a Nazarite vow, amen, not to take, amen, yet he would find himself struggling even with that vow to fulfill it. Like we do, amen, we tell God we're not going to do this ever again, and yet we find ourselves struggling sometimes and trying not to do it again because we let the flesh take over where the spirit should be moving in our life. Amen. Oh, we decide we're going to rest up at that little place, amen, upon the rock, Tam, and we find ourselves a lodging place there. Say, here is where I'm going to hang out for a while because I've about had enough. Amen. I've about had enough about anything I want to take anymore. You see, the Word of God has answers for everything. We just have to find them sometimes. And here he was standing at this rock being delivered now, and they bound his hands. He willingly went bound to this land valley of donkey bones. Words. It was talking about past Pentecostal blessings. And the Bible said he picked up the jawbone of one of these past Pentecostals here. The old preacher boneyard is what I'll call it. That's really what it boils down to. Amen. You see, the Philistines have seen preachers before, and they'd come and they've gone. And this one, you know, some of them had great spiritual victories, and they've had these wonderful battles, but some of them have fallen to the flesh. And here's a boneyard of them here. Amen. Not that they couldn't preach. Not that they couldn't live for God even for a while. Somewhere along the way, amen, the people delivered them up again. And they bound the preacher's hands. And they walked him down to the Philistines because they wouldn't want to help him. Instead, amen, they'd rather help the Philistines. How many times have we bound the church because of our refusal to be a part of anything? How many times have we bound things, amen, in Scripture, amen, because we refuse to do the things, amen, that bring about a church's success? How many times have we bound the preacher, amen, who goes willingly with you because what else are we going to do, amen? We're going to fight against everybody all day long? I'm fighting devils enough as it is. I don't want to fight you too, amen. I, you, know, I, you know, I'm, not, I'm just trying to be disrespectful here. Don't, don't think I'm pointing at anybody in this church because I am not. I'm just telling you about a boneyard where these preachers go to. And they're sitting in this boneyard, all these from the past, and you've seen them, you know some of them. And people use things and they'll say, well, the reason this failed, the reason that failed was because of this or because of that. It was because of this person, because of that. I'm going to tell you something. The reason things fail, amen, is because the Spirit of God, amen, is no longer allowed to move, amen, but folks are bound up. When we deliver ourselves, amen, and when we think Philistines are bigger than God, when we think Philistines are greater than what God can do, amen. Folks, you need to start believing in God again. Can I say this with, with all of my heart to you? God!
God still does big stuff. Say it again. God's still in the big stuff business. We've relegated God to doing some small stuff in the healing department. Amen. Uh, and if he does some of that, then he's still our God. I want to tell you something. He still does big stuff. Amen. Uh, he's still a big God that knows how to handle big problems. Amen. He's a big God. That could bring about big revival in your life if you'll just stop untying the hands of those that's trying to help you. Amen. Because God's got some things he's got designed for you. At the power and the glory and the anointing of the Holy One, God wants to set in your midst, in your world, that every battle that you are facing, that you're putting on somebody else and blaming somebody else for, is nothing more, amen, than you not willing to fight the Philistines anymore. Instead, we find scapegoats for things we refuse to do. Period. Samson said, you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> you see, when God's spirit began to move on, Samson. you see, God's in a delivery business. It's what he does. <laughs> it's as long as there's somebody there willing to go. As long as there's somebody willing to take that spot. I mean, God's willing to bless God's willing to touch, and he's willing to help. And the Bible said, amen, God said, I'm going to move despite what they're saying. I'm going to move despite what they're doing, amen. If i got to move them out, amen, to move others in, I will. Say that again. If i got to move others out to move others in, I will. Amen. See, that spirit began to move, and all of a sudden, he set a fire to it. Uh-oh. There they go. Amen. Folks, here come that Pentecostal fire one more time. One more time, Samson, amen, his hands were freed. And when Samson's hands were freed, amen, he went down and he grabbed the rock, amen, because Samson wasn't willing to break the vines. He wasn't willing to take them apart. He reached down and he grabbed the jawbone of a donkey. He remember that big mouth preacher. Amen. I remember some of the words, some of the sermons he spoke. And all of a sudden these words started back, amen, to Samson. He's like, I know what to do with this, amen. Come on, what'd he say? Uh, amen. Uh, amen. Uh, God will slay a thousand in your life, amen. Uh, praise God, well, one, one can slay a thousand, two can slay ten thousand, and there's a thousand Philistines there. He said, all it took was the word of one old jawbone, amen, and I just picked it up out of the dung heap uh, and out of the dust pile. And I said, you know what I remember when that preacher preached? I remember when that preacher preached that. You know what, I, I found it in my old tape bit. And I, I found it. I could barely understand half of what's said on the tape. But here's what he said. Amen. And it's the same thing my pastor's been preaching. Same thing that one. But because he said it, it, it carries more weight. I'm good with it. Amen. I don't care what it takes. But just find an old jawbone somewhere. And remember once again that God is still big. That God is still powerful. That God is still strong. That God can still do great and mighty things that you know not of. He's still in the resurrection business. It's what he does. God is powerful. God is mighty. God is strong on your behalf when you let him. So we go and we pick up the jawbones of our life. And, and hear me when I say this. If you don't want to hear me, fine. Then go get your old tape deck and listen to it. I don't care. Even, just remember, you need a jawbone in your life. You need a jawbone in your life. Amen. You, <laughs> folks, I'm here to tell you here I don't care where you get it from here, amen. I want you to understand something, amen. I just know that God's spirit needs to move in your life again. In your life. Amen. So stop making your excuses why it's not. Because you're going to find it more often than not is because you refuse to fight Philistines anymore. Amen. God still moves. He always has. He's never stopped moving. Amen. Amen. You see, we, we used to live a life of sacrifice, and we just don't do that anymore. You know how many people over the years I've had have told me, I, I used to drive a bus, but that was 30 years ago. I don't do that anymore. I used to help with this. I just don't do that anymore. I don't do that anymore. Folks, I'm going to be honest. There's some folks don't expect to do that anymore. They shouldn't have to. Amen. But it doesn't make us useless. Problem is, we go from not doing anything, doing something anymore to doing absolutely nothing anymore.
And then we wonder why the Philistines be upon us. I have racked my mind. I have prayed until I don't know what more to pray about certain things. God has never failed me and he never will. I may fail him, but he'll never fail me. Never will. But I know God is strong and he's powerful. And he's going to work on some of y'all's behalf. Amen today. So I'm telling you, you, you go get you an old CD if that's what you need. Even if these words are coming in one ear and out the other while you're in here, then you go find yourself an old tape deck somewhere. Amen. Put, put some Grand Paul DePew in there, Brother Lonnie, or, or put somebody, amen, uh, put some old preacher, amen, you're going to find her saying the same stuff I'm saying. Amen. That word hasn't changed any. It's the same word of God. Amen. Sometimes the Philistines surround us and we can't see anything for the Philistines. If you think I'm trying to pick at anybody here, I am not. I'm simply trying to tell you it's time you get the Spirit of God moving in your life. Because pastors can't do that for you. I can't read the Bible for you. I can't pray for you. I can pray for you, but you know what I'm talking about. I can't do your praying for you. Amen. I can't do witnessing for you. I can't do. My goodness. Something's got to come into your heart and into your life. Say, God, I need something. I need it. I need the power of the most descending in the midst. Because I can assure you, at the old preacher boneyard, he made a lot of, lot of messages there. There's a lot of things still hanging out at the old preacher boneyard. Yeah. The problem is, like Mark 7 and 13 says, we have made the word of God of none effect, amen, because of our traditions. Your traditions, he said, not the traditions of God, but your traditions you've made. The, you said, well, I don't do that on Saturdays. This is what I do on Saturdays. I can't help on Saturdays. Your tradition, not God's. I can't help with this because this is what I do here. You don't determine what you can and can't do. Even though the word of the Lord says the spirit of the Lord, amen, come on. What's it do? Come on. It strengthens us. It leads us. It guides us. It helps us. It blesses us. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Except on Saturdays because that's my day. Duck that one. Ha ha. I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me except on Mondays because I know some go down to jails. Got chairs to dodge you now, folks. Amen. But are you just being mean? No, I'm trying to provoke you to good works right now because I refuse to watch some of you miss your blessings in this life. Amen. That God has blessed you with because you won't get out of your own way. The Bible says God had not forgotten Samson. He knew what Samson had done. God is not mocked. What's for a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Scripture bears record of it. It will always be true. If you sow the wind, you'll reap the whirlwind. Samson, you've sown some good works. You've done some things. Amen. You've let the Spirit of God move. Even though you've had some fleshly battles that you've lost. I'm not going to forget you when you need me most. There's still water inside that old, old jawbone. You see that same place, that same jawbone that can slaughter Philistines hip and thigh. Even that jawbone, amen, praise God, that can destroy a thousand and put a thousand to flight, amen, is also the same jawbone that can bring you refreshment when you need it most. I'm here to tell you today, amen, Water ain't always tasty. Sometimes it's bitter. But it's still water. I don't think it was sweet water he found in an old dusty jawbone. I really don't. Oh boy, it's got dust in it. Yuck. We are, you know. We ain't drinking out of no dusty cup. Praise God. 
Nah. Some of us have sat back and said, God, you clean that jawbone out, you put it in a hot press somewhere, hey man, and you steam clean it. And then and only then will I drink of it. Well, I'm all you got. I usually don't come steam pressed. I come straight out of the dryer as a general rule. Man, I come with a little dust on it, folks. I'm not always perfect. Some water for you. I'm sure hoping it'll help you understand what God's trying to do for you. He's trying to let you know something here today. That you don't have to be afraid of Philistines. He's still bigger than they are. He's still greater than they are. And things you're praying about, you're going to get an answer to. You hear me? You'll get your answer when you stop walking away from the Philistines and start fighting them again. Here, I'll do this. Good preaching, Brother D. Yeah. Folks, that's how it's done. See, I remember when folks preached like this at me 10, 15 years ago. I'd get on my seat. It's me. Philistines got so controlled you can't even get out of your seat anymore. Put your two arms out, put your legs back, and guess what you do? Y'all say something, would you? You're killing me up here. Amen. Amen. I want y'all to stand with me right now. I'm done. I have nothing more to say here today. You've been wondering where your answers are at? They're there. Amen. If you will, he will. It's just that simple. If you will, he will. God's still in the resurrection and power business. God's still in the glory business. God's still in the anointing business. God's still in the business. God's still in the strength business. God will give you all of it when you need it most. I can't tell you how many times I feel like I have been at the end of my rope. Amen. God tied a knot in it for me. Amen. I can't tell you how many times I have been frustrated with things sometimes. And I, I just wanted to walk away and say, forget this stuff. Who needs any of this mess? I'm not talking to you for the position of the pastor. I'm talking about just other times in my to walk with God. There have been times I've been frustrated with people. I've been frustrated with situations. I've been frustrated with things, with my, with all kind of stuff. But there's always been one constant. One constant through it all. Jesus loves me. I know it. The people will fail, but God won't. But God's always with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. Jesus is in the delivery business. It's what he does best. Folks, I'm just trying to tell you, if you want something from God, if you want a move of God in your life, what little thing you can still do, whatever it may be. I'm talking about things that we get entangled with or things that have been placed upon us. We can still do something. For some of you, you need to start reading your Bible more. Some of you need to start praying again. Some of you just need to start witnessing more. Amen. Some of you still need to learn how to give again. So Come on. Come on, I've been around long enough. No, I know how it goes when you're mad at somebody. Your wallet goes with how mad you are. I've seen it. <laughs> Praise God. And really, the only person you hurt is yourself. Now, if I seem raw today or this message is too strong today, I do not apologize for it. I do love you, but I can only give you what God has given me. I knew this would be hard for me today. I didn't even know how to preach this today, and I'm just hoping that I didn't offend too many along the way. I'm hoping somewhere it got into you. Find something again that stirs you. That makes the spirit up get to move in you. <laughs> it's something just motivates you in ways you haven't been motivated in a long time. Pick up the phone instead of going to Facebook for a while. 
Call a friend. Call somebody you haven't talked to in a while and just have a conversation about Jesus. If they hang up on you, move to somebody else. Find a way to work it into your conversation. Get out of that mode that we get into so many times where it's all about us, us, me, me, I, I. And remember, there's more to this world than what you fill it with. Remember, I hope my heart is going out to you till you understand where I'm coming from. I'm not trying to be mean. Please don't take it that way. But I need someone to realize that we haven't made it to heaven yet. We're not there yet. There needs to be something that drives us again. The Holy Ghost needs to be made manifest again. God, I've been praying. I said, God, I just need you to move in the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost outpouring. I need the Holy Ghost just start moving in ways it hasn't moved in a while. I'm not talking about a one or two day revival. I'm talking about a revival without needing a preacher to come along and do it. I'm talking about a revival from the individual. Amen. That race itself to the person next to him and to the next to it and to the next one. Amen. And some of these young kids that we got around here that are seven, eight years old are coming down to an altar seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you adults start seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost again because I think it's out of some of you. I haven't heard you speak in tongues in so long. It's ridiculous, some of you. Amen. God's wanting to pour his anointing out in such a way I felt a burden for this the other day in a way I cannot explain to you. Uh, the time for feeling sorry for our days is over. Something must come from us. Because God, I'm willing to take some more time in prayer. I'm willing to take some more time I know it's hard this day. We, we don't live 30 or 40 years ago. We, we've got more things to entertain us. We've got more things to take away from us and distract from us and keep us. Man, I'm telling you, I know we've got, I'm asking you to, what's left in you to fight some more. Fight for it. Fight for it. Fight for it. Because if you don't, you refuse to fight. You're going to find yourself spiritually lost. You're going to find yourself in the devil's hell because you refuse to fight anymore. This life's become easy because God's blessed you in certain areas. But let it become so easy that it becomes commonplace. So I'm telling you, go home. Grab an old tape if that's what you need. Grab an old CD if that's what you need. Whatever it takes. Learn to fight again. Learn to fight. I want to open up an altar right now to any that like to come and pray. To any that like to come and pray. Amen. These altars are open.